Ho, oh, what's going on, Coaching Success Radio? Today's show is all about perfecting your personal brand. As I build my coaching business, I want to know how to effectively serve clients and make more money doing it. This podcast will pull back the curtain to reveal exactly how successful coaches are building their empires. Join me as I engage with top coaches from all over the world to discover their secrets. No theatrics and no theory, just real life strategy. My name is William Winterton, and this is Coaching Success Radio. Okay, so I am super excited about today's episode because about, I don't know, three or four weeks ago, I posted on a few Facebook groups asking the question, what would you like to hear on this podcast? What are some of the things you want to talk about? And one of the things that kind of rose to the surface was personal branding or branding in general, business branding. People were asking questions about how do I do it? What does it look like? What does it even mean? And it was interesting because it's something that we hear a lot, but we don't always know exactly what they're talking about. We know it has something to do with uh, creating an identity for yourself or branding your, your materials to make it feel like it's all the same. When I'm thinking back in the corporate world, I think of branding as being like Coca-Cola has a brand to it, right? It has a name to it. There's a feeling that goes around Coca-Cola. So whenever you see a Coca-Cola sign, you instantly recognize the brand, the symbol, but you also associate that with something pleasurable, refreshing, sweet, fun, summer, right? That kind of stuff. So that mindset of talking about what a personal brand is, how do you how do you take that and squeeze it down into an individual? Especially if you are a smaller individual, like just one person, right? Trying to go up and combat against mega corporations who are doing much bigger things on much bigger budgets. How do you brand yourself? This is where knowing how to personally brand yourself is a huge advantage. And so I went ahead and reached out to one person who I know is an expert in this field. I've spoken with her many times and she's phenomenal. She's funny, she's French, and she swears a little bit, and it's okay. She's actually really, really cool. So her name is Fanny Myth, and I am just blown away at how much content she dropped in this podcast. So you're gonna really wanna take some notes, really wanna pay attention, and save this episode for sure, download it, uh, and grab a bunch of information from her because she's gonna share some of the some of the finer points that are gonna help you build your personal brand uh, really crystal clear and really do it in a way that's faster, cheaper, more effective, and kind of get through some of the hurdles that a lot of people struggle with when they're first starting to develop their own name and their own branding. Uh, there's also opportunity to reach out to her as well, so I, I highly recommend that as well. But gonna go on, talk with her, and get to that interview right now. Uh, Fanny, how are you doing? I am amazing. Actually, it's kind of like summertime now in France, so if you guys can guess, I'm actually French, so I hope you can handle that <laughs> for the next few minutes. But yeah, no, no, everything's amazing. I, I just booked my future travel uh, to Australia and Bali at the end of the year. So pretty excited about this. I'm going to have like a book out. So a lot of stuff actually happening um, in 2019. So really excited about it. So you, you just, you travel more than you're in one place. I remember this about you, that you were like, you constantly are not just, you know, I'm going to go visit here and visit there. It's like you move somewhere and live there for a, a bit of time. And then you move around and you just, you're constantly kind of going. Yeah, I mean, when you travel and you work at the same time, it's kind of hard to just visit the place for a week. So usually I just stay like a month there so I can have like half of the day working on my projects with my clients and then the other half just going on adventures. So it's kind of like how I schedule my travels. And it's just because I'm just so interesting and curious about different cultures. It's just so exciting. And I can meet a bunch of like other entrepreneurs there and actually meet my clients. Because like I remember one time I was in Phuket and I was actually working with one of my clients face to face. So she actually hired me online and we waited for me to be in Phuket to work together. That's fantastic. So tell me, uh, I, and I gave a little bit of an intro before, but tell me a little bit about who you are, what you do as a personal branding expert. So basically what do I do? I help entrepreneurs uh, at the beginning from beginners just getting uh, started with their personal brand to uh, six, seven figures, uh, successful entrepreneurs, uh, basically build themselves online. So really leveraging who they are in their personality, story, vision, and of course their zone of genius uh, to attract their dream clients and actually get and attract uh, profitable opportunities just like like media, um, interviews, whatever. So all kind of different inter- interviews, opportunities uh, to build their uh, credibility authority online and really be seen as the go-to expert in their industry so it's basically what i do like if i like okay, let's say i'm going to come to you uh and I, I say i want i want branding help what what can i expect to happen to my business by going to you instead of trying to do this on my own 
so first of all just like myself i just hired another mentor like a, like two weeks ago so i'm just a big believer of mentorship and really hiring people who are where you want to get uh where you want to be so basically what a mentor or coach can do for you it's basically lighting you the way to where you want to be so this is basically what i do for my clients and the question is like what branding can do for you uh, most of my clients for example have been in the corporate before so they had like a nine to five job and basically just imagine yourself you were in that room with that future boss and he that boss has like two different series a uh, resume in front of me uh, in front of him and he's like Oh, so what makes you different? Because basically you probably have the same experience than someone else right next to you, uh, another candidate, competitors. Uh, you probably can get the same results. So what's going to make the difference? This is everything about not your business. So everything about your personality, everything about your passions, everything about your vision, your belief, your values. So everything out of what everybody is expecting to. So of course you're supposed to get results to your clients. But the thing is that what really makes going to, Oh, all right. Oh my gosh. My English is so amazing today. Anyways, um, <laughs> it's really not the kind of results you're going to get because people expect you to get the results, but really the connection you're going to build with your audience. So branding is just going to help you position yourself. First of all, on top of mind of your ideal customers, but second of all, it's going to help you connect with your ideal audience. So that's really like the two main focus of building a brand. It's okay. really about your online reputation, how you manage it, how you build it from scratch, and how you're going to be seen a certain way by your ideal clients. So what would you say is some advice if somebody was getting started? Like if they, if, um, before they hire you, what's, the, what's something the very first thing you can do to start getting your brand like going the right direction? But really the first thing to do is niching down. A lot of people, and most of my clients actually have that struggle, uh, we all have that impression of missing out. If we just focus on one little baby market or on just one ideal client, we just feel we're going to miss out on opportunities. People are not going to hire us because we just focus on something so specific that our brain designed to actually make us survive, it's going to freak out. So a lot of people want to be known for so many different things that at the end they are known for like nothing so for example i help brands i mean i help entrepreneurs build their brands that's it i'm not going to help whatever business owners with like big companies or like whatever can i have a really specific ideal client in mind this is why i can attract the ideal clients to me so the first thing I would definitely recommend as a personal brand is really be known for one thing so if I ask you everybody knows Gary Vee right right Okay. How Gary was known at, at the beginning, really the beginning of the beginning. It was known for selling wine, right? So he was selling wine. Then he became the wine YouTube guy. And then he built that like digital agency. And then he became a speaker. And then he actually sells shoes and nobody cares because nobody care about what you sell. People care about you and your journey. I actually built like three different businesses in three years. And I, I actually rebranded myself three times. So the first time I was, my first business was all offline. I was doing like digital marketing and stuff, kind of like consulting, bit like website development, email marketing, whatever I could do when it comes to like digital. My second business was Facebook ads. And I actually started to brand myself as a personal brand through that Facebook ad agency. But after a year, I was like, mm, something's missing out. So I really want to do something I'm passionate about. And actually, when I was putting myself out there to promote my Facebook agency, people started to reach out and they were like, oh, do you do like personal branding coaching? And I was like, oh, by the way, I'm actually super passionate about it because it's super natural to me. This is called the Zola Genius. Because you don't have to think about it. It doesn't require you effort or whatever. It's just, it just flows. So then from, my, from being like the Frenchie Facebook ad girl, I became the Frenchie brand alchemist which is me now. So actually teaching entrepreneurs how to, sh to start and grow their personal brand the right way. So it's, it's not a big deal if you need to rebrand yourself, but you have to start somewhere. You have to be known for one thing. So then you can be known for a second thing and then a third thing and then something else. Make sense? So ultimately you are branding yourself, not the products you sell, not the business you're in, not the services you provide. You're branding yourself. You're creating a name and an identity around your brand. And that's ultimately what you're selling people, right? Like you're selling 
Fannie myth. And it's, it's, it's you are the product basically. And then the service you provide is, is focused on the, the, the target niche, the narrowed down niche you're actually serving, but everybody who knows you and recognizes you, uh, that's, that's what you're helping people to create for themselves. Is that, am I understanding that correctly? I mean, exactly. Cause at the end you want like personal branding. If I can sum up that it's just personal branding equal building a customer experience around your name. That's it. Doc. Like, like that's an easy concept to understand, but when you hire a coach, this is why personal branding is even more key when it comes to coaches and consultants. It's because when someone hire you, they hire you, they pay you to spend time with you, to get your point of view and your outside perspective on where they're at. They want to experience something working with you and not someone else. So you want to create that first experience before even they want to hire you. You want to stand out your own way and do stuff your own way because this is how you will try that kind of clients. So someone is just fun. So for example, I have a puppy. So she's like an Australian trooper. She's like a year and a half old. And I used to put a bunch of pictures of her on my Facebook because she's part of my brand. But why do I do that? Because I know my other clients are dog lovers. So unconsciously, they're going to be attracted to me based on the fact that I do have a dog and I do travel because I know these are two things that they truly value in their own life. And that customer experience starts as soon as you put content out there, as soon as you open your mouth, or even the way you like, for example, the, um, the outfit I wear today, super casual. Like this is just the way um, I have my tattoo, I have my bracelets. I have my hair kind of like messy, whatever, but this is who I am. I'm not going to just show up the way I'm not. I can be dressed somehow, like, I don't know, networking events or like going on stage or that kind of stuff. But otherwise I just show up the way I am because I know I'm going to attract the kind of people who want to, to be surrounded by that kind of people. So trying to be yourself and, and, and kind of create, again, an image that people re respond to, they're going to relate to. Is that kind of one of the main strategies to go up against these major big influencers who have huge marketing budgets and who have huge you know, advantage over us who are just getting started or people who are just kind of building themselves up? Uh, is that one of, the, one of the best ways that we can actually go and, and try and make ourselves different, make ourselves known or... So you have to be strategic about it, but you can't fake it. That's the little subtle thing. So you just said you have to put yourself a certain way. Yes, but you can't fake it. So you can be a big influencer with like a huge marketing budget, or you can just get started out. Doesn't change anything. Because I know from like my personal story, I know a bunch of influencers who are totally broke. So it's not the amount of followers you do have. Of course, the more followers you do have, the more impact you can have. But if you're actually building yourself a personal brand to get more clients and actually really impact deeply those kind of people, it's not about the amount, not about the number of likes you do have. Of course, the more likes, the more followers. Of course, people are going to unconsciously associate you with like an expert or an authority. But otherwise, I would rather impact 10 people than 100 if these 100 don't give a crap about what I do. How, how can I make sure I'm going about the right way? There's authenticity. There's, you know, really narrowing down, niching down. Um, is there any like major mistakes that you see people make when they're trying to set themselves up in the beginning that you kind of have to coach them back out of? Like they, they, you give them kind of the, the, the framework, let's say, but they start taking direction. And is there something that seems to be like the main mistakes that people kind of get into when they try and brand themselves? I think the first thing, so I was talking about niching down, but also picking your platform. Like at the beginning, you see, for example, you see Gary. Gary is all over the place. But guess what? He has like 20 people working with him. So he has a bunch of videos on Instagram, on LinkedIn, whatever. He's like everywhere. But you don't even have to be everywhere. You just have to be where your idol clients hang out. So the first thing I would suggest definitely, like, I mean, another thing I would suggest is definitely picking one social media platform. Like mine, my go-to is kind of like Facebook. Because you do have Facebook groups, you have your profile, you can level wage, you can run ads. Like for me, it's just the best platform to get started because there are like billions of people there. But if you prefer to go on Instagram because your idle clients are there, or if you want to go on LinkedIn because it's more like, like more whatever formal uh, and you feel more comfortable hanging out on LinkedIn, then go for it. But just like pick one platform, one niche to get started with. And, and definitely like the way you can put yourself authentically is stop thinking. It's weird. But as soon as you 
think at least twice about the way you should say things or you should act. I remember my first man, like my, yeah, my first mentor ever who's not a mentor anymore because it was weird. But anyways, he told me <laughs> videos, don't move your hands. And I was like, what? I don't want to just control the way I talk and the way I act on camera. This is me. So if I want to talk with my hands, it's just so natural. That's me. If it annoys people, then they are not my clients. They're not even my ideal followers. So it's really, first of all, stop thinking twice. Stop overthinking that process. Like the best stuff to get better at what at putting yourself out there, if you don't feel confident, start putting yourself out there. Like, and if a five minutes video scares you a shit, then put a two minute video. I was freaked out to do lies at the beginning and still not really like them. But anyways, I don't like lives and I don't feel comfortable doing them. So what I did was just pre-recording videos. And my first video, it took me three hours to edit. I was my like, gosh. I'm not going to spend three hours per day editing like a 10 minute video. No way. So I was like, okay, all right. 10 minutes doesn't work. Let's do a five minutes video. And from five minutes, I did so many five minutes video that then now like doing a 20 minute video works totally. And I can actually have a structure and I can just explain stuff and just have fun with it. And really having fun with your customer. And that, that's something that a lot of people forget because they want to be credible, they, they become boring. So if you want to just make jokes, make jokes. If you're just a, like someone funny, be funny. Like if you're someone so like a nerd, play with your nerd side and just laugh about it. Like I laugh about my French accent all the time. You know, it's just like going on a date and you're stuck with someone and you're like, oh my God, that just drink's going to last forever. And you're just <laughs> counting the hours and you're like, holy shit. Like, why did I just say yes first place? That's kind of the same. If people don't like you online, guess what? They can just stop the video or just call and skip your post. But some others are going to love what you're all about because nobody showed up really what they should the way they should show up. That's why so many of my clients, for example, and so many entrepreneurs out there and coaches feels out of alignment because they show up a different way online and they just feel like a fake or they feel like a fraud or an imposter. But when I see your posts, and I'll just say for the audience, uh, if you're following her, Fanny is like posting all the time. She's putting videos, she's putting content, she's putting, uh, she's brand, and when she, I'm talking about branding yourself, like I've seen your dog, I've seen your house, I've seen your moves, I've seen things that you've gone through. And it's like, I feel like I've lived vicariously through you. And it's, it's amazing. So that's why two years later, I'm like, man, I need a branding expert to come on the podcast. The first person I think of is Fanny Myth. Cause I'm like, oh, I, I know, I know somebody. Uh, because of how well you've branded yourself and how well identify. Um, would I be an ideal client? I don't know, but I've been following everything that you're doing. And I think that you, um, if, if people are listening and watching this right now, there are going to be a lot of people who are attracted to you just by your character. So if people are watching right now, what's the best way? Well, first of all, tell me a little bit about what it is that your program offers. What, what, what do people expect when they go and they work with you? So basically, uh, I have different programs. So I'm going to have my book out there in probably two months, three months from now, but I mean, before 2020 for sure. Uh, so this is the book because I have my own method that I built over like the past two years. I've been in the digital world for eight years. So I tried and tested so many different stuff. Uh, but basically, my method is called the C4 method. The first one is clarity. So as soon as you have clarity, you can get co more consistent about the way you put yourself out there. So that's the second C. And then because you're more consistent and you're taking action every single day, you're going to feel more confident. And a lot of people are like, oh, how can I build, like, I, how can I have more charisma? How can I have more presence online? I'm like, this is just training over and over and over and over again. So some people are talented to put themselves out there. It's just easy. Some others, it requires a lot of effort. So really like the third step of a method is definitely charisma, how to build that leadership and how to do it in a really natural and intuitive way. And of course, by, by putting those three first steps together, you're going to attract your dream clients, which is the last C. So how do you go from actually getting clear to getting those clients, you can basically read my book, which is not out yet, but it's going to be soon enough. Uh, I'm going to build a, a, a course. So my first course ever in the next probably like three weeks. Uh, and I also have like a one-on-one -on -one, uh, coaching program, uh, which is more for entrepreneurs who already have one niche. They already have like uh, results for themselves and their clients. 
because I will tell you in like a minute, but a way to start your brand is really to share your expertise first and then stuff related to your lifestyle. Exactly what you said, travel, dog, whatever, uh, stuff around your life. So that's really like the three first ways to work with me. I'm going to be on like, I'm going to launch a couple of like masterclasses on really specific topics as well, uh, under like a hundred bucks. But putting yourself out there really goes like two different ways. So if you understand that you have to be yourself and you have to anticipate that some people are going to love you and some people are going to hate you, then your brain can't really freak out anymore because you know people are going to judge you and criticize you. But everybody's focusing on that part when you also have to focus on people just like you and I following us, like following each other for years, supporting each other, whatever happened, and just like really connecting in a deep level. And so many people, and that's normal, your brain is designed that way. We always focus on negative stuff and anticipating uh, awful consequences of what we're about to do. And this is when everybody's just sitting in their comfort zone and they don't take action because it's scary as shit. Seriously, like even myself, the first time I posted my video, I was seriously, I was freaking out. I, had, I just had one click just like to put the publish button and I was like, my gosh, people are going to just laugh. It was like three years ago. I was like, they're going to laugh. Like I have a shitty like Frenchy accent. Like some people have spent like millions on ads and I was spending at that moment like 50, 50 bucks per day. I was just talking like basic stuff and I was expecting to not get any critics, like critics. I'm like, no, okay, just expect them. So then you don't have to freak out about them. And what happens was so total contrary of it. I got a, people reaching out. Oh my gosh, this is so cool what you're doing. Oh, how can I work with you? I want to, you to go on my podcast because I love the way you talk and you explain stuff super easily, whatever. So test stuff. You won't know till you haven't done it. So yeah. it's really like start somewhere. So if you start with my advice, start by niching down. Start by getting clear who your ideal client is. Start by dividing your daily content in two different pieces. So the first piece I told you is all about your results, your zone of genius. So if you're amazing at coaching coaches, then share insights on that and give your best stuff away. Really, a lot of people, and I was there two years ago still. So I'm not just like sharing examples. I was there, I struggled with it, and I had to go over that kind of like limited belief. But you have to share your best stuff out there because people will hire you just because they need someone to kick their butt because they need like a intimate relationship with you in terms of like they, they want to have that, in, yeah, that like close relationship when they can ask like feedback. And it's not because you give your best stuff away. I gave my best like Facebook ad strategies out there. I gave my best advice on building a personal brand out there because people are not going to hire to not hire me because they have that piece of, of information. They're going to hire me because they believe the process goes way deeper than what I share. And they also believe that, oh my gosh, if that only stuff worked for me for free, imagine what I can get if I pay you. Brilliant. Awesome, Fanny. And, and, and I mean, your ideal client just like mine value their time over the money. So, so my job as a coach or mentor is to give you an outside perspective and make connection that you can't see yourself. This is why I myself hired a branding coach and actually branding business coach because at some point you just get stuck in your own business because you are just so into it that it's so hard to take a step back and really see what's going wrong. So you can just take action every single day, but actually take unfocused action and unproductive action. At the beginning of my personal brand, I was taking action, but like I was wasting so much of my time when now I actually attract like like media opportunities, not every day, but like every week easily without asking anything. But it didn't happen the first time I started my brand. Same with like client request. So it's really about like starting somewhere, but also starting the right way. If you don't have the money, you then have time. So then you can try to figure it out on your own. But if you really value the investment kind of thing, and you know if you hire someone who already been there and that can show you the way, and actually save you months, even eventually years of struggles and challenges, then you could eventually work with me if we are actually a good fit. But just to give you an example, you don't want to attract just everybody. 
you want to attract only the kind of specific clients who have the right mindset, who have, you want to have an amazing relationship. Also, I will never work with someone who's like, oh, I want to try your stuff for months. I'm sorry, we're not going to work together. Because I want to have a long-term relationship with my clients. And I still have like a couple of like all my clients. I worked with them like two years ago. And guess what? We still like in touch. And last time, like one of my clients, she was like, oh, I have these cool opportunities. Oh, I have these clients. Like, can she reach out? Because eventually, blah, blah. And I do the same. Because as soon as you become my client, you enter my inner circle and you become a go-to for me. So if someone's just need, like, for example, my last client is working in the finance industry. Then now, if someone just asks me, oh, do you need any finance guy? Yeah, of course. He's one of my clients. Just go and talk to him. Right. So and that's brilliant. Yeah. So you just, you don't just hire a mentor to show you the way, but you also enter the inner circle. You're going to, to be that one go to in their own inner circle. And trust me, that kind of like people you look up to, they have like amazing opportunities for you, but you have to probably put the money first to access this kind of opportunities and actually skyrocket really your business from scratch. Fanny, thank you so much for jumping on today. It was a pleasure. And I would love to have you back on again at some point. It was fantastic. I would love to. Yeah, for sure. Wow, that was awesome. Thank you so much for tuning in and checking us out. New episodes are coming out every few days, including lots of conversations with massively successful coaches sharing their secrets with you. So be sure to subscribe to our podcast and YouTube channel so that you don't miss out. And if you're looking for a way to start making serious money from your coaching, you need to check out my free training. It's at williamwinterton.com. I lay out the step-by-step on how to start making five figures a month in the next 60 days. Check it out, williamwinterton.com. I'll see you next time.